fans! Welcome back to Beautifully Bookish Bethany where I have new videos every week about books and the geeky mom lifestyle. Subscribe for more bookish videos and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time I release a new video. In today's video I'm going to be reviewing Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I'm going to be very upfront and say that this book is not going to be for everybody. However, if this is up your alley, I think it is very well executed, and I am generally a fan of Silvia Moreno Garcia's writing. Mexican Horror is her first New York Times bestseller, so this one is getting a lot more attention, but she actually has quite a number of novels under her belt. What I think is really interesting about her as an author is she's tough to pin down because she writes in so many different genres, but I love the project of her career. Instead of writing in one particular niche area, she she writes in a variety of different genres, but all ones where people don't often think of Latinx writers writing in them. So she's done everything from sort of a urban fantasy set in the 1980s, a vampire novel, a romance of manners in the tradition of like Jane Austen or the Bronte sisters. Last year she wrote Gods of Jade and Shadow, which is a combination of historical fiction with mythology and fantasy. She wrote a noir thriller, and then in Mexican Gothic she's written a gothic horror novel. And that is one thing I do want to say very clearly. Mexican Mexican Gothic is not a gothic romance, it is in fact a gothic horror novel. And so if you're going into this book expecting something akin to Wuthering Heights, you are going to be pretty shocked and disappointed. That said, if you are interested in a horror story with gothic vibes that is using the horror genre as a way of talking about bigger issues, and includes a super creepy house that may be haunted, you might have come to the right place. I love the project of what she does as an author because in all of her books she infuses Mexican history and culture and mythology into what she's writing regardless of what the genre is, and Mexican Gothic is no different. This is set in Mexico in the 1950s and it follows a young woman named Noemi who's about 24 years old who goes to this isolated, creepy, possibly haunted estate to check on her cousin. Her cousin had married a white man who lives at this estate and had recently sent home a very disturbing letter and so Noemi is going there to check on her and see what's going on. And when she arrives, things slowly start to go very, very wrong. This is a book that you probably want to go in without knowing a whole lot about it, so I don't want to spoil anything, but I will say I think this book is incredibly atmospheric. I love the way that it weaves in history and culture in interesting ways. It does a great job of building this creepy atmosphere and has this kind of slow build of creeping, unsettling horror that ultimately culminates in a lot of things, and an ending that I found to be quite satisfying. I will say there's a lot of very disturbing content in here, so if you are somebody who needs content or trigger warnings, I would recommend you check those out. A link to my Goodreads is always down below, and I do have an in-depth Goodreads review, including most of the major content warnings for this book. So if you need those, go check them out. I can totally see why this would not be everybody's cup of tea, partly because of the initial slow character-driven pace of the book that takes a while to get going. The writing is beautiful, but don't expect it to be super fast-paced, but also because of some of the fairly gruesome and difficult content. That said, in this case, they weren't things that I was particularly bothered by, and I think part of the reason is that I can see why she made the choices she made and why she used the things that she did. I would say that in many cases the horrific things included in the book are being used as metaphors for some of the larger issues that she's wanting to talk about, while also just telling a really good horror story. Some of the issues that are being addressed here include colonization, cultural appropriation, racism, colorism, and misogyny. Probably among others, but those are a lot of the big ones that you see her addressing and using horror as a way of unpacking those things in interesting ways. I found this to be really effective and really compelling, and yes, at times quite disturbing. One example that I'll give is that there are several instances in this book of sexual assault and attempted rape, but in the way that it's done, I believe she's using it as a metaphor for talking about the colonization of the body, and I thought it was really interesting the way that she's trying to talk about some of these larger issues. So I will stop there. I don't want to spoil anything. If you have read this and want to talk spoilers, please do talk to me in the comments down below because I would be interested in that conversation. 
This certainly is not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but if you are a fan of the horror genre and something dealing with those issues sounds interesting to you, I would definitely recommend checking out Mexican Gothic. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on Mexican Gothic. And like I said, if you've read this or if you're interested in reading it, I would be really curious to hear any feedback. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.